Rugby League is back. Drum roll, please. You're a true Warriors fan. I have no recollection of that one, no. We don't all have to agree. It's good to be back. It's just a really boring thing. Oh, partner. Start winning some games. <laughs> I think there'll be a lot of changes to the team. I've got them uh, making the eight for mine. Let's go. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Advantage Line, TAB's Rugby League betting podcast. My name is Cal Tiley, joined in studio yet again by my good mate, Paul Mawate. Paul, what a weekend of footy. Oh, how good. We've got our first win under our belts. Tigers fans. Uh, <laughs> gross. Well, just because of one of the guests that we got on the show today, I thought I'd throw that out there. But no, nah, fantastic uh, week of uh, footy. Boy, oh boy, a few injuries coming out of last week, which I'm no, sure we'll touch on. Still my thunder, we're going to get to that. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. Let, let's get to our other uh, oh. guests who are on the show. I'll, I'll let you do the stuff. Before we get oh. to the other guests, before we get to the other guests, I just want to, just want to, uh, I guess, throw back to last week. Yes. And uh, yep. Teddy, who who joins us every week, yep. he was extremely confident on uh one particular pick called it the bit of the year. We're just going to quickly replay this. So, so stand by. Four straight, probably going to be five. They're eight and a half point favourites. Dragons plus eight and a half is probably going to be better than you. You cannot be more confident on 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 the dragon. <laughs> Diddy, welcome. In. Uh, how do we feel about the dragons? So, is this the place we asked for a pay rise, or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I didn't get to see the game live. I had a, a, a function for uh, for my oldest kid, and I'm I'm there. I'm sneakily checking the phone, and I'm like, "Oh, Dragons up eighteen four. How good is this? <laughs> Holy moly! Oh, the next hour was one of the sickest hours of all time. Every time I checked, it scored again. Uh, how do I feel? I feel horrendous. Not as horrendous as the state of my betting accounts, but uh, I feel horrendous. <laughs> We love that. We love that. And uh, another one of our good mates joining us today, Blake Ashford. Must be up and about after a big Tigers win, mate. Mate, I started on Friday night with the, the big Warriors win. I was down there in Christchurch. Um, there were some good scenes down there. And then leading into the Mighty Tigers, um, like I said before, you know, it's it's strange. I tipped the perfect ground and only got one multi up. So um, it is very strange. I thought my pockets would be lined with cash, but no, it seems to be opposite. Oh, I tell you what, when the sun shines, you got to make hay. So Blake may look back on uh, last week uh, as we head into winter, and uh, that's when uh, you really start to struggle picking teams, and he, he may look back and think, gee, I, I missed uh, a big, big trick there. Yep. I can't really give advice because there wasn't a lot of winning at all, <laughs> at all last week on this show. So <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> do that shortly. All right, we're going to get straight into it with divided opinion and – I think there will be some divided opinions here. As Paul touched on, uh, plenty of injuries to some big-name players uh, over the weekend. Um, so my question to you, boys, and Blake, I'll start with you. Uh, number of big losses, including Walshie, Cleary, Tino, Payne Haas, Ruben Cotter, Mitch Moses. Who's the biggest loss to their team and why? Oh, um... That's a that's a tough one. I would say I'm going to go Reese Walsh only because of the other injuries. I thought if he was still there, he could have held it together. Um, you know, Cleary's not out for that long. Mitchell Moses is out for extended length, but I think they've got enough talent there to uh, probably win half of their games while he's out. They won't win the important ones, but I think they will. So I'm just going to go Reese Walsh just because I think that he had – a chance to really um not that he hasn't established himself but i just thought he could have really come onto the scene even more um with reynolds out paint house out just taking control of that team really making it his own um so I, i'm gonna say he's a he's a massive loss for them kitty i uh, one answer for me nathan cleary and uh uh just the betting movement yesterday came into a six and a half point road favorites uh against a, a, a an unbeaten roosters team uh, i also against a team that the roosters team that's doing one but uh played very well over three weeks 
than they have two and a half point outsiders. That line's going to have nine points. That is, we're in Andrew John's, Jonathan Thurston territory there for, for importance. Um, I, I agree completely that there's there's plenty more um, you know, longer-term impacts for Parramatta and stuff, but Nathan Cleary not playing. You know, Benning says it all. I'm, I'm glad Teddy brings up Joey Jones because wasn't there in a Newcastle game where um, he wasn't going to play? Uh, it was it, 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 a few circles new. Um, and there was a bit of a betting plunge on the Newcastle <laughs> Knights uh, before. Go, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll move on from that. Uh, for argument's sake, um, I'm going to go Mitchell Moses. I think he's got the best general kicking game in the game at the moment. He he forced that Manly team back uh, into their own 20 um, from well behind uh, his 30 on a number of occasions on the weekend. His, his, he gives the defensive line, his kicks are so high and so long that he gives the defensive line time to actually move up and be able to keep the likes of Tommy Turbo stuck in there, you know, starting their sets from inside their 10, if not inside their 15. So Mitchell Moses, and he's out for, what, eight weeks, eight weeks. possibly. I think he's a big, big loss to that Parramatta Eels team. I, I agree with Teddy, Nathan Cleary, that line move from, I think they were, what, around $1.49, $1.50, uh, prior to that news, and now they're out to what two dollars and three cents north of two dollars. So yeah, he he's a huge loss. But uh, I think Mitchell Moses, he will be a big big loss for that Parramatta Eels side. Might be what I need for uh, my Parramatta call for them to finish fifteenth this year. Well, the the hey hey hey, uh, top <laughs> four is out of the line now. But I think the way you look at it as well is like, yep, Cleary's probably the best out of all of them, in my opinion. Yes, but would the Panthers still win? Without him, they've built that culture there. They've got those kids coming in where, yeah, they might not beat the Roosters, but they're going to beat 90% of the competition without Nathan Cleary, I believe. Whereas I don't know, you know, with the others, whether they will. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I just want to go back to what Teddy was saying and, and how he was waxing lyrical about Nathan Cleary. And and just to call out for anyone, any listeners, please, we've got to find that that. That clip where he said he was barely a first grader, please. I think we've had enough of my clips being played today. <laughs> You're the reason this show's still going. <laughs> I, I think um, listeners are waiting for uh, your first greatest hits album to be released. Um, and I'll tell you what, it'll be quickly followed by volume two. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, let's have a quick look at last week. Uh, first game up was Panthers Broncos. Panthers won 34 12. We did say, Teddy, that we sh would struggle to see who the Broncos scored points from, and we were bang on. Yeah, they, they managed two points while the game was still kind of competitive, but uh, got a couple of late consolations there. Uh, it, it was Penrith just kind of going through the gears. Obviously, that's going to, going to take a step back with Cleary out for all that. He was he was a magician the other night. He just absolutely picked them apart. That little short ball where he held it off and gave it a tongue go, uh, on on the right edge. It was an incredible ball. It was just yeah, you know, anyone could have scored that try. It was a beautiful ball. He created all himself. Uh, issues out of the game, of course. The 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 Reece Walsh hit. Uh, I thought it was a bit stiff to be a penalty myself. I didn't think it was worthy of a penalty. It was uh, an accident. I don't think any player leads with their head. Uh, cause I know there was you know the uh, duty of care and all that stuff, but uh, I think that was a little bit over the top. I thought it was quite interesting that the Broncos were trying their absolute best to get him back on the field. It was pretty clear he sustained a pretty nasty injury. There was a little bit more than a cut. So the, the fact that they kept trying to rush him on is is, is something else. Um, and the double movement try. What what happened? Double mm -hmm. movement instead. There is absolutely no way Mitch Kenny didn't promote that ball. So. Uh, Bit of controversy in the game, but no controversy over the winner. Penrith, very, very good. And, uh, yeah, like like Blake said, I, I, I agree with him that even with that, they're going to beat kind of yeah, three quarters of the competition and they look pretty marching their way to another uh, minor premiership, I'd say. Oh, that's a big call early in yeah. the season. Ooh. Anything to add there, uh, either Blake or Paul? Um, I'll, I'll chip in here. Oh, I agree with Teddy. I love the way that Cleary drifts across the field. Um, and he's basically got three options. There's usually someone coming back, cutting on the inside, and he shows the ball every time. So the defense has to, they have to stand, they have to wait. Uh, or a gap opens and he'll take it himself, 
Or as we saw, he just holds onto the ball long enough and then gives a little short ball out or a long ball over the top out to an unmarked winger. Uh, look, that left-hand side of the uh, Broncos defence was picked apart by Cleary um, last weekend. He he put on an absolute masterclass. It, it was just beautiful to watch. And I felt a, a wee bit for uh, Pia Kuta and the boys on that left-hand side of the Broncos defence. They just, Look, Cleary will do that to a number of teams. So this... This won't be just the Broncos who get picked apart by Cleary, um, but he was absolutely sensational. Uh, just brilliant. So, yeah, they will miss him, but I, I agree with Blake. I think they've got enough there. Uh, they don't have another Cleary, but they've got enough there, and their system is so good that whoever does come in, I think the machine will just keep ticking over, um, and they'll pick up enough wins to get through this forever, what, four, five weeks that Cleary's out. Yeah. Just for uh, just just for reference, punters, we are recording on a Tuesday prior to teams being named. Um, Blake Warriors eighteen Raiders ten. You were there. We would we'll probably have to go to uh, Teddy after you to get some non bias uh, comments because I think the, the other three of us are. I've got my views in the game, but it's probably not the same as. Uh, oh, mate, there there was a couple of things come out of that. The best moment was before the game. Webby's walking along the sideline. And we were sitting like in the stands and the whole stand stood up and gave him a standing ovation and he had to walk through the crowd and I was getting chills. I was like, that is, that is cool. Like, um, you know, to have that belief in your coach and just to have him walking through the crowd after that, like that was amazing. Um, but the big thing for me out of the game was the first two rounds, they've learnt their lessons. So they're in similar situations. They were good at the start. They were behind like they were in round one. They didn't panic like they did in round one. They came out the other end and had the lead. Then in round two, we saw them give away an eight-point lead. This time, they had the eight-point lead. They learned how to hold on to it, fight for it, close out the game. So for me, the biggest thing out of that was we've learned from the first two weeks whatever errors they made in losing those games, and they bought it out and won. And also sort of a moment, I think, for Metcalf, which can set him up for not just the next game, but throughout the season he was a bit quiet and then as soon as he scored that try if you go back and watch the game the next set he didn't really run the ball at all but after he scored that try he the next set he had a carry he uh set someone up and then he overcalled sean johnson to kick it but himself on the last now i don't know but that's pretty confident to do that when you haven't done that all game and it just sort of seemed like that try sort of filled something in him some confidence and um i think he's going to be better for that so like it was a huge win and it's got me thinking about the raiders as well that they aren't as bad as i i thought they were at the start of the year i think they're a pretty tough team and they're going to be a pretty tough out for a lot of teams teddy uh webby said it after the game sometimes you just got to win ugly and i'll tell you what that last five minutes was ugly yeah, look, I didn't see a lot of the game. I was at the Olympic Hotel uh, across the road from the Sydney Football Stadium waiting to go to the uh, uh, Roosters Bunnies. So, uh, but I did, did catch parts of it on the, on the TV there. And, you know, Webby's exactly right. You've got to win ugly. Like, I don't think there's anything pretty about the way the Warriors. There was, there was nothing pretty about that game. It was an ugly game of football. But you do need to win those games. And they have traditionally been the games the Warriors have, have thrown down the camp. So, uh, good win for the Warriors. Like I said, I, I had I had the Raiders running last. They are too mentally tough to run last. I'm happy to kind of concede that one's one's out the window after three rounds. I, I still think they they kind of fairly talent deficient. I, I have no idea for the life of me why Zach Hosking didn't start that game. He's been the best player through two weeks. I have no idea. Elliot Whitehead. I I I'll I'll take two dollars twenty off of being Elliot Whitehead in a race these days over forty minutes. Like, like he's that slow. Like, what Whitehead is a pure middle. Don't get me wrong. I'm no knock on him. He's a workhorse. You've got to put him at lock, put him in the prop rotation, and keep Hosking on there. Hosking's been fantastic. So, oh, I think Ricky might have done his dash before the game on that one. So, uh, but yeah, the wires are off the board, off, on the board, and uh, go away. Well, to there we go. We've got a hot producer, take for the... To our producer, that's the clip. That's the clip for the week. <laughs> Can we arrange a Bronco for uh, Ze uh, for Elliot White and Teddy Tedeschi to uh, sort of turn up? Do you remember the um, the fastest player in uh, rugby league when they used to do that? The, they should bring that. That is one thing that needs to come back uh, in the NRL, the fastest player. 
Absolutely. Um, oh, the grand final sprint was one of the greats. This, yeah. uh, you couldn't get enough on, on Cam Pereira, could you? No, exactly. You take short offs. Um, we talked about duty of care and the Broncos game and the head on um, the Walsh hat. There was a, a, a hit on uh, Tane Tupiki where he somersaulted, landed on his face, and then the Warriors got penalised. Is that him or it? Chanel? Chanel. Oh, sorry, Chanel. Yeah, Chanel. Sorry. Chanel. Um, I don't actually. I don't know if it's a penalty, but we ended up losing the ball. Um, can Paul? Can you talk me through what the hell is going on there? Surely there's a duty of care. One, one I can't, I can't work out. The referee said, "Oh, Chanel's jumped early." Look, he had hands on the ball. Like, how can you be jumping early if you've got the ball? Two, he's landed on his face. Look, this is one for Teddy because um, if anyone knows the uh, positives and negatives around NRL officiating. It's uh, <laughs> on Nick Tedeschi. And we could we could have another sort of offshoot show um, where we discuss these things in depth. Um, more hot takes, more hot takes, Paul. Wouldn't there, 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 <laughs> legal would shut that down very fast. There are, <laughs> there are a number of perplexing decisions, not just in the, in the WARS game, but right across the weekend um, from officials. So there's no rhyme nor reason. Or oh, and don't mention going to the bunker either. Um, it just gets worse, darker and deeper. It's um, it, you you can't you cannot make a before a game make a call on just how this game is going to be officiated. You can't. You did, and, and this, this whole this whole crackdown on jumping early is is utterly ridiculous in the way it's enforced. Like you see, some there are, there are games where. Players are genuinely competing for the ball, and my Miss Tom had uh, run by you know, a half step. And Blake will be able to speak to this better than anyone. Is, is a, yeah, had had difficulties to get that timing exactly right. So you've got the the, the the right leap at the right time, and all of a sudden they're getting penalised. Whereas you get players kind of flying through deliberately, not even looking at the ball, just kind of jumping up and waving their arms around, and not getting penalised. It, it, like that, if you're going to have this this edict in place, there has to be a consistent enforcement across the games, and it just isn't. One more before we move on from the Warriors game. Blake, your good mate, Rog, he got thrown in the back and he delivered. He was a menace. Yep, he was. And I think you'll find him probably there this week if Chance isn't uh, available. Uh, I know Chance is very close to getting back, but if he's not available this week, I think you'll find Roger at the back. Look, I, I don't think it's a long-term thing for Roger. I know people are wanting it to happen. And some are suggesting put Sh uh, Chance into the centres. I, I just don't think, like Rogers, at that age now where the body's just getting used to rugby league, he put on a lot of weight. He, he'll be able to do a job as we saw. He was very good at the back after that first little drop ball. But I don't think that it's a long-term solution for Webby or the Warriors. But he will he will, he will do a job, and it'll be interesting to see him versus uh, Kalen Ponga one-on-one -on -one again. Just one other thing I'm, i just i can't believe that we saw in the middle of crusader rugby country a crowd give a standing ovation to a new zealand warriors coach that that's a huge shift uh in just exactly where rugby and rugby league stand in this country at the moment and it's a wee bit to do probably a wee bit to do with how poorly the crusaders are doing in rugby and although the was that was their first win of the season. Um, they showed last season that they're up to it and they haven't been out of the first two games of the season either. So that's a huge shift, Teddy. Um, you you were you were over here when rugby was king and league was very much the little brother. Well, that gap's closing. Didn't stop me fighting the good fight, though, did it, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Rugby's dead in Australia and rugby's dying in New Zealand and it cannot happen quick enough. I'll, I'll take, take number three. You've got to give yourself some reps too. It's probably on the back of your uh, interview with Webby. Oh, Outstanding stuff. Yeah. Yep. He is such a nice oh, guy. The, oh, it's good that Mawadi curse has finally been broken. That's all I can say. <laughs> it was, I tell you what, we, it was either that or it was the Ashford curse because the Warriors were yet to win a game when Ashford was commentating, but we <laughs> broke one too. Yeah, there we go. Right. 
All right, next one. Roosters 48, Rabbitohs 6. Oh, boy. Teddy, you were there. Hopefully you can remember it. The Roosters' right edge absolutely dominated uh, your your namesake, Teddy. Hit a blinder. It was a great game. Yeah, we're often mistaken the two teddies, so both <laughs> great achievers. Uh, no, it's, uh, it was a tremendous performance from the Roosters. They are the real deal. Uh, this game was probably more about Souths than anything else, but the way they exposed and were ruthless against their rivals. We, like, one of the things we've missed out of the Roosters the last few years is kind of quick ball movement and kind of a ruthlessness of really putting teams away. They absolutely I would say 48 6 was a flattering score to Souths. That's how bad, that's how big the difference was. Like, like Manu was sensational. That try, the, like Sand and Smith kind of kick off the ground straight to Manu. Like, that was, yeah. The, the game's really going to miss Manu when he, when he goes uh, uh, to French Union. But Dom Young, South missed the opportunity to sign Dom Young. He, was, he, he kind of looked at South. They passed the opportunity up. Yeah, big mistake there. South looks slow. Really, really, really slow. And the pressure's on Demetrio now. Like I, I, I don't think South started the season wanting to get rid of Demetrio. I think they were they were, they were happy to see how the season played out, and they, if they could get Wayne, they'd get Wayne regardless of how, of how it went. I, I don't think they can wait that long now. I think if they lose to the Dogs this Friday, I think they're a massive runner to lose to the Dogs on Friday. Then yeah, he could be out next week. The pressure's on, mm-hmm. and like there, there, there's a few things there. There's clearly a player in what Josh Mansour said on the podcast, and I think yeah. You know, Maybe we we'll go to you, Blake, up to this, but kind of some insight into how coaches communicate and that kind of level of dishonesty obviously rubbed Josh the wrong way. It doesn't seem like he's on his own on that on that front. So one of the great things about Wayne, about Craig, and I don't know, maybe about Chenzi as well, but is that the message was very clear. You know, this is why you're in, this is why you're out, this is what you need to do to get back, this is what you're doing well to keep your spot, all that stuff. And Jason's just obviously not delivering that. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It, it, I don't know whether he goes just because oh, I don't know who the assistant coach is that's going to step up, really. I think, I think it'll be Ben Hornby would be the guy. Kind of. okay. Well, then, yeah, then most probably if he does go, that'll be uh, Ben Hornby's job until Wayne gets there, I reckon, next year. But um, on the coach's front, it's 100% right. And you get a bit scared during the week because you don't know whether you're in or out. And listen to Josh Mansell, and it's all starting to make sense, even going back to last year with... Sam Burgess and things. So I think there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, they have the caliber there to turn it around. That's the that's the thing. And I'm waiting for it to click. I'm waiting for it to click, and it's just not happening at the moment. The Roosters were good. Don't take that. The th- the scary thing about the Roosters is they don't have a real stand up half at the moment. Like Sam Walker's doing a job. Curry wasn't there. Sand and Smith filled in good. But they're winning games without a half. They're winning games with Teddy running the show with their forward pack. Joey Manu coming in running across field, throwing balls out the back. Like, it's a scary side. If they get one of their halves clicking or they're both of them together, they're, they're going to do a number on this competition. Speaking of doing a number, Bulldogs 32, Titans 0. I'm probably happy to concede uh, my take on the Titans earlier in the year was wrong. <laughs> I'm quite happy to uh, state that my uh, take on the Titans getting the wooden spoon is very, very mm. close to spot on. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just note that your take on them getting the wooden spoon and Carl's take on them doing really well has not been played today. So <laughs> we, we we didn't have that available in the bank. So you, know, you, can't, you can't just pull these things out of nowhere, Teddy. You've got to prepare. You know? <laughs> oh, he doesn't miss a trick, does he, Teddy? I love it. Um, Titans three dollars sixty favorite for the spoon. Uh, look, he's got to be um, very, very confident, Teddy. Now after that performance from the Dogs, at Bel- they should play a lot more of their games at Belmore because uh, I tell you what. Um, uh, first of all, I'm guessing the visiting teams probably don't like it that much. They'd probably prefer to be in uh, one of the big stadiums in Sydney. Uh, but the Dogs, um, look, they weren't for my, they weren't outstanding. Um, but they did enough to win. And when you've got the likes of Kiko charging down um, and, and chasing and, and put the ball down over the line, um, it looks like they've sort of turned the corner a wee bit. Once again, their selection policy sort of, it's, it's a wee bit confounding. Um, but they did enough to win against a poor team. Um, and I'm hoping this sort of leads on to bigger and better things for the dogs. Um, 
I'll let Teddy uh, have a go on how he sees them progressing from here. But there are some signs here, some good signs that um, they've turned the corner. Yeah, kick out reminiscent of the great Steve Price in his, uh, in his heyday with the charge down the scoring of trials. It was, was wonderful to see. Uh, one thing you can't knock on the dogs this year is effort. I think in all three games, they've put in plenty of effort. I think particularly on the defensive side of the ball, they really try hard. I think that's a good sign this year because last year they'd obviously given up the ghost pretty early on. So uh, credit to, to Sorrell on the team. It was a great performance, but it was absolutely handed to the ball from the first minute when Brimson... One of the fastest players in the comp with the line wide open, two metres out, decides to try to pass to Kieran Foran. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen a, a bigger bomb try since Russell Richardson dropped it over the line going full air 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Uh, it, and that was a real turning point there. The dogs, like I said, the dogs still have some issues with, uh, I thought Taff was again pretty ordinary at the back, but he had cried into the back uh, as quick as possible. But the thing I like most about the way the dogs play, they played direct for the first time this year. They played through the middle. Now, Canterbury probably have the worst middles in the comp, but they got some role going and, and they really they really took advantage. I thought Reid Money, that might have been his best game in Bulldogs Colors. He he re, like he's a perennial trier, but sometimes he tries too hard and, and kind of gets in the way. I thought he picked and and, and coded his moments really well there. I I, I think Good, good early times for Canberra. Again, not getting too carried away, but I think it leads them. You know, I think it puts them in a good spot heading into this this Friday, and we'll we'll get to the Good Friday game soon. But you know, I, I'd rather be going with the attitude the dogs have got at the moment than the, the attitude the rabbits have got. Spoke about effort there, Teddy. Um, effort lacked in this game. Dragons twenty four, Cowboys forty six. Dragons were up eighteen four, and Ben Hunt had the ball on a string. I feel so sorry for Ben Hunt. He is by far the best player in that team, in that club. And he is just being wasted. You feel uh, sorry for Ben Hunt? What about feeling sorry for me? I was all in back. <laughs> Plus eight and a half. Hunt. Ben, Hunt's on, ben Hunt's on 900 a year. <laughs> Don't worry about Ben Hunt. <laughs> oh. Oh. He, had, he had a hand in all four of their tries. Mm -hmm. Um I was, I was watching this, I text Teddy, and I said, add Jack Bird to your list of players that might be the worst in the NRL. His effort, or lack of effort, especially in that second half, was horrendous. If you're looking around, uh, you know, you're in that team, and you're seeing his effort, like, leave me out of that. He is... It, it should come as no great surprise, because he puts no effort into any game. So, I, I have no idea why... Like they've created this whole issue around Zach Lomax. I'm not saying Zach Lomax is a better centre of the winger. Like I think it's, you know, six, six one half dozen the other. But your centre is the most difficult position to defend on the field, and you're putting Jack Bird, who I think is slow and puts no effort in, and is he's red all the time, so he's always charging in for no apparent reason. So it doesn't really do the team thing. And you're just leaving him at centre to, to expose the team. I, I, I thought it was a disgraceful performance from the Dragons, uh, and I would I would hope that we will see some changes from from Shane Flanagan this week. But uh, uh, yeah, I, well, I do. Ben Hunt is a great player. They are, and they are such a momentum team. The Dragons, like, one, like they're on the front foot. I think they've got enough ability to score points. But one thing, once things get get tough, and they're doing a lot of defence, they go to water very quickly. So. Uh, Having said that, Cowboys, mm. very, very good. Maybe the most ruthless team in the comp at the moment. Like they're they are playing fast, they are playing expansive, and uh, you know, Drinkwater's having another very secretly very, very good season. It's really like in an era of great fullbacks. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying he's emerging as the you know the next T or anything like that, but he's a you know, he's at least on par with Dylan Edwards for mine in terms of like contributors to wins. The one the one I, I wouldn't be moving Zach Lomax, to be fair. He's yep, taken, like he, he, he is out, he is outstanding. My opinion sort of changed. When, since he's been in the, the wing position, he's taken two carries a set. He's up there jumping for balls. He's over the other side of the field trying to create something from his wing. In yep. in my eyes, he'd be my New South Wales origin cent, uh, winger. Wow. At, at, at the stage. Because he can jump high for a high ball. He's as fit as anyone in the competition, the way he's carrying the ball. He's a tough carrier and he just wants to win. Um, you can see it by the way he plays. So you'd be a bit, um, 
you know, you talk about effort. That's someone who um, shows a lot of effort and not getting the Do you, do you keep Bird in the centre of still, or do you make a change and try and bring like a fungi or something like Oh, mate, to be fair, I had Dragons running last. So I don't think there's too much you can do to the team to uh, change my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you still got your boots, Blake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, they'd be 18th, not 17th, if I was playing. But we, we, we <laughs> saw after round one, Dragons got smashed. Ah, sorry. Um, the uh, Dolphins got smashed. Wayne Bennett changes for round two straight away. Changes and significant changes. Change in the halves. Change in the centres. He, he he made he in the in the pack as well. Did you do the same for the Tigers last week? Yep. Make some changes straight away, and it had, had made the impact. Yeah, that Galvin, uh, sheep creepers. He, he's a he's a very very good player. But uh, back to the dragons. Um, does Flanagan? Does he have the kahunas to like make changes um, for this week? I don't think um, he's got the players. Does he have the players? Yeah. First yeah. of all, does he have the? But something has to be done in the centres first of all, uh, because that's just not wor working. But one of the really concerning things to take out of that game was in the second half, I think Chad Townsend got the ball about four or five metres out from the line. He had two or three Dragons players holding on to him, including a four, at least one forward, and he managed to carry them across and reach out and dot the ball down for a try. He looked like Tom Alolo at his peak. Yeah, <laughs> when he was when he was taking that hit up, that was <laughs> that great. was very very concerning. If you're a dragon supporter, because there was very little to no effort put in. The, and you're right, that was on Jack Bird's side. And I think Jack Bird may have been one of the players was, involved in the tackle. And then he there. Put, his, put his hands up like, "Oh, what are you guys doing? Oh, come on, mate, be better." Um, we are <laughs> chewing through time, guys, so we're going to speed up. Who would have thought? But before we do, we'll let Blake have a word. Tigers thirty-two, Sharks six. Oh. Like, give it to us. Oh, mate, you could tell from the, the get-go that they were there to play. The way their defense was running out of the line, um, Isaiah Papali'i was, you know, doing his best to try and control Talakai on that edge. He was playing good. I thought the Sharks were on at the start. Nico Hines was in everything. It wasn't until it, it was sort of like they were waiting for the Tigers to fold. And the good thing for the Tigers and Benji is that they didn't fold this week. They kept coming. Their defense kept coming. Aiden Caesar. Hats off to Aiden Caesar. I think he helped the young fella out massively with his kicking game, uh, his control. Justin Olam, and last but not least, Api Korosau. I mean, oh. he can play some footy. That guy, the way he, he's one of the last ones that still chops the legs and makes it a, a dominant tackle. And the way he runs the ball and gets under those tackles, I, I, it's very unique style, and it seems to work when it does. So, good signs. The the thing is. Um, they played at the eighth wonder of the world at Leichhardt there. Um, now they've got to go back it up and be consistent. So it's going to be a tough ask going to, to play Parramatta. But look, as long as they're consistent and they're showing effort like they didn't do in round one, I think we'll be fine. Uh, Eels 28, Manly 24, Knights 14, Storm 12. Teddy, any quick words on these two? Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, 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 Tight, tough game. Melbourne have got plenty of excuses with um, uh, Munster and Hughes out. I thought they tried really hard. I thought Newcastle were decidedly unimpressive considering that the talent band should have had on their side. But uh, tough game there. And oh, I, I think that Melbourne were pretty happy with kind of getting away, getting as close as they did. So they're just, they're just waiting for the troops to return. Blake, any words on your eels? Uh, they were impressive. The way they were down and then came back, I think those two teams are very good teams that'll be there at the the business end of the year. I think Manly were just as good. Blaze Talangi looks like he could have solved that centre position if he can at least work on that defence a bit. The first game it might be a bit harsh, but his offence was good. So I, I look, I, I love the Eels still, and I think both teams will be there at the business end. It was great to see a matchup for the ages as well with uh, Morgan Harper against Jackson Paulo on. Uh... <laughs> on the weekend, it was it was really wonderful stuff. There must have been six or seven tries scored down that side. You could probably call it a draw because they topped out with the number of tries scored. But wonderful to see both teams really trying to expose that edge. Obstruction, my ass! <laughs> this is just ridiculous. All right, uh, a new a new segment to the show, which may or may not work. 
we'll, we'll try it though. And if you guys haven't read the run sheet, then it's definitely not going to work. But I'm calling for any bad beats of the round. I can kick, I can kick off. Uh, our little syndicate of mates. We had a little bit on Friday night in the Warriors game. Little power play. Luke Metcalf to score inside the first twenty minutes, paying twenty one dollars. Not a bad beat, to, beat as such, but I just want to shout out Jackson Ford uh, for his inability <laughs> to pass the ball to a wide open teammate running at a thousand miles an hour to score under the post. As, as someone who was on Adam Fanua Blake first try, I couldn't thank you anymore, Jackson Ford. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was sickening. Yep. I don't um, think he can pass that far. It was you to me. I don't. He, he cannot pass that far running at that speed. I don't. That's why I held on to it. You I don't, don't think he could pass, pass it. That you just far. hold it like a relay race. It, it was a wee bit it. further than that. You're um. Yeah, how big was yep. the feature that you're sort of inflating or deflating? I might say. Um, bad. The distance at the distance between those two players. A bad beat for myself in the Tigers game. The Tigers uh, with the eight and a half start. I had Josh. Ah, uh, sorry, Isaiah Papali'i, Jareen Buller to score, and I also had Galvin, the young fella, to cross. He got close so many times and just couldn't get there. It was one hundred and thirty-one to one. So, um, yeah, I went wide and almost come off. You say a bad beat when he was there. He's a running five-eight. Got very close. Bad beat at 131. So that was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like this. <laughs> Mate, he got over the line about three or four times. Yes. Plenty yeah. opportunities. Yeah, okay. How long have we got for Teddy's bad beat? Yeah, make it oh. quick, Teddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got two quick ones. I had Raiders plus seven and a half. So big thanks to Jamal Fogarty for missing that conversion. <laughs> um, and in the last game of the week, had two separate bets Ryan Pappenhausen, last try scorer, and Storm plus one and a half. So. Need them to either score twice or not score at all, but they scored just the once. So thanks, Tyron Wishart. Anyway, and anyone quietly, anyone falling for a Tyron Wishart dummy, have a good have a good hard look at yourself. Like seriously, <laughs> no one fell for a Rod Wishart dummy. But let's not start falling for Tyron Wishart dummies. You got me? Not really a bad beat. I took a same game multi on the uh, Eels Sea Eagles game. Just a little three legger coming out at around twenty three dollars. Um, Tommy Turbo to score. Thank you. Mitchell Moses to score. Thank you. The Eagles minus five and a half. Um, so it, it wasn't really – well, it would have been close if um, that try had stood. That ridiculous, cool obstruction. Come on. That, that all you have to do now as a defensive player is walk into anyone on the other team um, and claim obstruction. It's ridiculous. All right. Well, punters, if you've got any bad beats, send them to us uh, on Instagram. Slide into our DMs. TAB.NZ. Send us your bad beats and we'll read some out. All right. Grid time. We're doing the grid for yesterday, Monday, 25th of March. We're going to do it speed slot like we did last week. Across the top, we've got 100 points in a season. Has played for the Tigers and played in 2015. Down the left. Has played for the Raiders, has played for three plus clubs, has played for the Knights. Teddy, give me your top line, please, and all three scores. Uh, so I've got a brain for the first one. Raiders, 100 points. Matt Gaffer, 1.71 points. Mm -hmm. Who? Uh, he just made that. <laughs> that, yeah, made up that is not a player. That uh, is a lengthy, character lengthy, from Game of Thrones. goal kicking uh, uh, winger slash centre back in the early 2000s. Um, I lived in Canberra for eight years, so uh, saw a lot of bad Raiders teams in that era. Uh, Raiders, Tigers players struggled with one, John Bateman, 4.23 points. And uh, Raider played in 2015, Tom Leroy, Lars Brain, 1.23 points. <laughs> Blake, your top line. That's this. I don't know how you beat me here. Anyway, Terry Campisi, 8.03. Um, the Tigers player and the Raiders player, who I thought should have been less than. Bateman, Ryan O'Hara, 5.25. If there. And played in 2015 for the Raiders, Dane Tills, 2.09. I'll go next. Uh, Todd Carney, 9.57. Tigers, Raiders, again, I thought this should be lower than Bateman. Blake Austin, 8.07. One, one of my favourites. Uh, and two weeks running, I've managed to jam this guy in. WWE star 
Daniel Vado. <laughs> yeah, 1.34. One right. Just on Teddy Bean in Canberra for eight years. He must have been there just after the great Canberra team and then left just before they started uh, rising up the ranks again. He was there. No, in- no, I was, I was, I was smack bang in the middle of the Matt Gaffer, Mark McClendon, Andrew McFadden era. Not a, not a coincidence of the uh, Raiders. Nah, let, let, let's hope he doesn't move back to New Zealand because I don't think the Wars can take it. Right. What's your top line? Uh, Clinton Shifkovsky, 9.32. Uh, Tyron Smith, 4.93. Anthony Milford, 3.19. All right, Teddy, middle row, please. Uh, three clubs, 100 points. Chris and Inu, 1.67 points. Brain. Uh, three class clubs, Tigers, uh, most famous Tiger uh, moment of them all, John Hopawati, uh, the old finger poker of doom. And uh, three class clubs, maybe my most common answer, Richie Fayo, so Plante 15, 0.44. What was the, what was the title for uh, your mate Hopawati? Oh, uh, 0.56. Wow. Well. Like, um, played 100, oh, 100 points, three clubs, Brett Morris. 4.66. Uh, the Tigers and three clubs was Scotty Sattler, 0.72. And played in 2015, three clubs, Jackson Hastings, Brain, 0.33. Lovely. Uh, 100 points, three clubs, Jamie Sauer, 2.86. Mm. Tigers, three clubs, Uppy Kurosawa, 1.68. Played in 2015, played for three clubs, should have been a unicorn, I reckon. 0.6, Blake Ashford. Hey. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Pause, pause for it. Please, some answers here from you. Oh, still, yeah. No, I just, that looked like a 0.8. That, uh, no, it's 0.6. <laughs> yeah, I right, just wanted to make sure. Uh, James Maloney, 3.86. Eason Masters, 0.73. Chris Heinington, 1.12. And the bottom row, Ted? Uh, 100 points, Knights, Joey John, 7.49. Uh, Tigers and Knights, Corey Patterson, 2.99. And Knight, who played in 2015, the Brain, Speedy Winger, Nathan Ross, 0.54. Yep. Uh, 100 points for the Knights, I okay, Ponga, 9.63. Uh, Tiger Knight was Kevin Nagama, 5.38. And I had the same as Teddy, Nathan Ross, 0.54. 100 points, Knights. Dominic Young, 4.2. Awesome. Last year. Uh, Tigers, Knights, I thought I'd get done here, but I haven't. Jackson Hastings, 3.91. Hmm. And in the final corner, played in 2015, Knights, I got very lucky here, and it's a unicorn. Carlos Tormavave, 0.1. How good is that? He played yeah. 15 games, uh, sorry, five games in 2015. For the Knights. He can't have played more than 25 first games, could he? He played 14. 14. Every yeah. time uh, Blake and you said 100 points, I thought you got a red square, and I thought, great, I'm not going to be <laughs> on the table. Um, right, Kurt Gidley, 14.4. Kevin Nigama, 5.38. Tariq Sims, 2.49. Oh, my God, Tarek. All right, total, Ted. 20.9. Wow. Uh, 36.6. 32.3. 45.4. Of course, big congratulations go to the Paul. There's no red squares in this one. So yeah, exactly. Like that's that's right. Paul. Well, I got a bit of notice this week, so I was able to do it yesterday instead of um, half an hour before we get here. He's increasing his lead, He's increasing his lead at the top, at the bottom, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mate, consistent, consistent, Paul. All right, let's get into this week's games. Um, going to deep dive on three of them, and they are the first one: Roosters Panthers. Roosters dollar seventy five, Panthers two dollars and three cents. With the news of Cleary being out, Panthers have won nine of the last ten. The average total points in the last ten is forty point eight. The total this week thirty nine and a half. Um. There have been five of those last 10 with single-digit winning margins. And the other five, the average winning margin is 26 points. Teddy, what do you like about this game? 
Uh, well, hands up for the start. I grabbed it up completely when News Clear came out and found a few straggling bookmakers and put the plus six and a half uh, the Roosters. So I'll be cheering the Roosters on for uh, uh, for plenty of time when the Dragons catch back. Uh, but uh, on faith, though, where I want to be on this game is I want to be on the under. Uh, I think Penrith games without Cleary nearly always go under. They've got a huge under record. I haven't got it in front of me, but uh, it's 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 around the seventy percent mark from memory. The, I think the Roosters to play a, a good style. The football stadium is going to be a very hard, a very hard out for a lot of teams this year. But there, there's a real atmosphere at the new football stadium. So uh, I like the Roosters. Uh, wouldn't be going too nuts at the the dollar seventy odd or whatever they are now. But uh, um, we'll be backing them, and but the under will be the, the big bet now. Blake, you like your Roosters here? I do like the Roosters. Uh, look, the side's going to be too strong. Um, they will put up a fight, the Panthers. It'd be interesting to see who they have in half. In the half, um, last year or you had Cogger, obviously, who's now gone. I saw uh, Dane Laurie play in the halves. Played seven actually for New South Wales Cup on the weekend for Panthers. So they, I don't they, know. Pulled, they pulled Brad Schneider out of New South Wales Cup. Oh, okay, I think because yeah. they nuclear is outside. So I suspect Schneider will play. Schneider will play. Okay, thank you, Teddy. Ear to the ground over there. Um, look, I, I, I think. Their, their culture, like we spoke about, they'll they'll be competitive. But like I said, Roos is way too strong. When you've got all that strike power, and yes, Lindsay Collins is out. Um, you may have one of the halves out again, Santa Smith possibly, but the reinforcements coming in, like see your Wong could come back in. Um, you've got the young Taro May, who's look outstanding. JWH still doing good things. So I think Roos is just too strong. Kiri back this week as well, I think. So I think we'll better have a great, great news for my fantasy team. Uh, anything to add, Roosters Panthers, Paul? No, no, just checking out the uh, total points bands for the Penrith Panthers. They're paying four dollars to score 10 or points or less. Ooh. Um, so just that's one that sticks out. I, I agree with Teddy when uh, Cleary's not there, they usually tend to struggle, uh, struggle to score points. So, um, I'm, I'm quite keen on the pen, uh, this being a low scoring one, but in particular, the Panthers being low scoring. All right, next one, Rabbitohs, $1.48. Bulldogs, $2.55. We'll keep this one quick, but struggle to look at the Bunnies as $1.48 favourites, Ted. Oh, dogs are great, baby, plus six and a half in particular. Uh, I, look, this could be a game where, where the, the Bunnies come out. I just can't, I can't hop the Souths at the moment with the way they're playing football, with the attitude of Latrell, Cody struggling, I was, I'm very anti Elias, but I don't think Dean Hawkins changes things much. I think they need to go to a Walker White and Hales combination. So, haven't done that. Uh, Cam Murray might be out here as well. So, uh, he's certainly carrying injured at the moment. So, I'll be chips and dogs in this one. Just the last one, the last team to smash the Titans um, in round one, who we thought were going well, then followed up with a, a drubbing the next week. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not taking much out of the dogs' performance. This is more an anti South play than a than a pro dogs play. From a from a strong dogs fan, that's big. Um, Blake Broncos two dollars eight. Cowboys dollar seventy two. They split the last eight four each. The average total in the last ten is forty six and a half. Total this week is forty one and a half. Mm. Uh, average winning margin between these two in the last 10 is just a tick over 13 points. Cowboys have got a big chance against a weakened Broncos team, you think? They do. And look, there's a reason they're down the undefeated team in the competition. Um, they can score points. Look, they're down by a fair margin against the Knights. They're a team that can be down 20 and come on and score and win the game like they did against the Dragons. So look, I would take the overs and I'd take the Cowboys. I think the dollar seventy twos very juicy at the moment i think it would blow out a bit um i'm guessing reynolds is back that's why they've they've shortened the the price there but yeah look i'll be taking the cowboys i don't see how they lose this game to be fair no reese walsh cobber at the back i suggest that's what i would be doing but it just weakens another position so yeah cowboys for me and they could score a lot of points in this one be a fast game and any chance Kevin Walters could play an edge on a back on the bench? It's cost them two games in a row, two games this season already. Like you can't just go playing three middles on there, and then when you lose a back or a second row, you, you wonder why you think, poor old Fletcher Baker's stuck out there. Just a good, good old tough prop that's got stood up left and right, and Jordan Ricky at centre was exactly the same. So, yeah, it'll be interesting when team selections come out to, to see with that, but hard to disagree with play. 
I'm with Blake here. Love the Cowboys in this spot. Um, I'm very happy to take the dollar seventy two currently and the minus one and a half. Um, I think they'll get squeezed in a wee bit more before the time we get to kick off time. They they're a, they are performing a lot better than I thought they uh, would be. Um, so I'm I'm glad. Uh, well, I'm happy to adjust my thinking around the Cowboys. Um, I'm getting on the train. Next one. Dragons three dollars ten, Manly a dollar thirty five. Well, I expect to see a, uh, an improved defensive effort from the Dragons, but I don't see them beating the Sea Eagles. Um, sea Eagles just have too much for them right across the park. I did, this is um, it's a little bit of a mismatch uh, for mine, um, but I'm hoping that Flanagan makes a few changes, um, and if he does, then perhaps we will see a bit of an improved. Um, performance by the dragons but the, the seagulls should be just way too good for the dragons here even if a few changes are made teddy you love the dragons as outsiders this week yeah chips and dragons we're going back to the well plus, <laughs> <laughs> plus eight and a half uh at home uh probably not with the same confidence as last week that's been uh <laughs> that's been really uh, uh dented this week but uh, uh I, i'm I'm not one. Of, I'm not convinced about Manly. Because yeah, I know they've played pretty well in all three games. I think they're a good team. Obviously, much better than the Dragons. But plus eight and a half times, surely the Dragons can't be that pathetic again. Of course, if Jack Bird's in the tent, I'm off. Everything I just said, take away. I'm just in Manly. I can't wait to see that. Uh, next one: Titans two dollars and eleven cents. Oh. Dolphins a dollar sixty nine. They're two and a half point favourites. Blake will go to you first. Can the Titans bounce back? No. Uh, that's it. <laughs> no, no I, I, I don't think they can. Tino's huge loss. That is massive. Oh, very um, sure. Jaden Campbell back, I, I believe, quite possibly, but still, that doesn't solve things for me. Um, I, I just think Redcliffe, you know, they made those decisions in round two to change it i just think they're going to roll with that same team and um they'll be too good for the titans it, it, there'll be a lot of points scored i believe um at sea bus any words on your dolphins paul get on get on yes 100 uh love the dolphins here uh th this is a very poor titans team uh, it's sad um that big tino uh, is gone yeah. for the season um he's a big out for them uh, but it's they're just, I don't think they're very well coached. I don't think they're, they don't have the problems behind the scenes that the bunnies do. Um, but I think it's going to get to that stage very soon where you're going to see some rifts start to appear in the team uh, if they don't pick up um, some points. And I don't see them picking up some points in the near future. So, yeah, love the Dolphins. Next one, Waz, $1.44. Sunday evening at home against the Knights, two dollars seventy. Teddy Warriors are six and a half point favourites at home. Can they win again? Yeah, big line. I, I, I'm really off the Knights this year. I, I don't, don't like what they're doing at all. The, the chopping and changing of the halves, the kind of forecast would be issues throughout the year. I don't love spotting six and a half points with the Warriors. A chance in the back. I don't think chance will be back this week. Um, but. Yeah, I, I certainly lean towards the Warriors. The, the, the dollar forty eight will kind of be going through a few multis this week. I would have thought so. Uh, I think they can smash the the, the the Knights up front. I thought even the weakened Storm side got the upper hand quite a lot against the uh, uh, Knights on Sunday night. When they were at home, no Munster, no Hughes. So uh, I think Warriors look a good play this week. Just like the uh, the Knights have won six of the last ten against the Warriors. Yeah, that... look, oh, it's sorry, mate. It doesn't. I don't think it weighs me too much. Um, the the big thing, a question, I guess, who comes into centre if Roger goes to fullback? Because uh, Rocco's been too good on that right side, so you're thinking left centre, where last year it was uh, Pompey who was there at left centre. Leia Tua, I believe, has been playing right side centre in um, New South Wales Cup. So do they just stick with Adam Pompey for the one week or chuck the kid in to the left side and let him go? I, I would love to see him have another crack because he's a big star. Big watch uh, this week, what the Warriors have been doing is laying the middle very well on the last, and you'll see 90% of the, the kicks go down their right-hand side. 
to Rocco Berry, who's been chasing unbelievably. So Tuala and Best uh, will have to do a lot of work getting back there on those last plays and a lot of pressure will come to them this week. So watch a lot of footy going down that right side. Was If they do put uh, Rog to the back, I'd love to see the um, the young fellow Leotawa get there. Mm. I thought he was very, very good pre-season. Um, he, he's a player for the field. Oh, I think he can make the step up. So um, I'd love to see him get in there. But yeah, I like the Waz here. And, and I agree with Blake. <laughs> Rabin best. He takes a while to turn around and chase. So uh, that's a nice corner to be kicking down into. Rocco Berry's been outstanding the first three weeks. He, he's been one of the most improved over the last, what, 18 months sort of thing. Defensively is incredible. And even on attack, he's, he's showing some stuff that we haven't seen before too. So massive. Uh, that's that's the confidence that the young players get when they're coached by a bloody good coach. Um, so that's why I wouldn't mind seeing Leia Tawa. Um, this chance in the end this year if they decide to put RTS at the back. That's why I never made it. Uh, next one, Sharks. Well, hot take. <laughs> Sharks dollar fifty. <laughs> Raiders two dollars fifty. Uh, Teddy, the Raiders have won nine of the last ten between these two, and they're paying two dollars fifty. Yeah, and Sharks were decidedly impressive, but I'm probably leaning towards the Sharks here. Back at back at Shark Park and. Uh, off a, off a bad loss. Well, there's no way to put that. They were, they, were, they were very, very poor. That was one of Nico's worst games. I, I think they're kind of that. I think they're just a level above the Sharks. So I'll be happy to take the Sharks here. It won't be a, it won't be a huge, huge play. But uh, um, one bet I'll also be looking to take here will be the under. You're going to have a, an evening game. You're going to have the Sharks on a bad loss. They'll be buckling down. And I don't think the Rays have any points in them. Particularly against a good side. So oh, I can see a game very similar to the to the Wild Raiders game last week again for the Raiders. So uh, under will be my best bet of the game, but uh, also don't run the months. And last game in the round, Parramatta Eagles dollar forty five, Blake's West Tigers two dollars sixty five. Para are six and a half point favourites. Blake, who do you like? Yeah, um, I, I think. Dejan arsi has been playing full back in New South Wales Cup, and he would be the one I would think would come into the halves. The Brendan Hands played six on the weekend. Um, so it'd be interesting to see who partners Dylan Brown. I think oh, the, if the Tigers can replicate what they've done, they might go close, but I just like Para. You know I'm on Para this year. I think their their forwards are too strong. Uh, Gutherson's there. I, I just think Para win this in a close one, but I think the Tigers show up in uh, every chance in this match. I don't mind the plus here, Paul. Yeah, uh, Blake uh, mentioned the the Eels pack. The, the Tigers pack isn't the worst, to be yeah. fair. Um, I've got that uh, Utuika Manu. Uh, as we know, Coruscant has just been ridiculously good. Mm. Um, so they can cause problems uh, for that uh, Eels thing. And I think that Manly game took a bit out of that uh, Eels uh, pack. So, yeah, I, I do like the plus six and a half as well. In the last three games between these two, the margin's only been five points, and you know the Tigers have been below yep. average uh, for each of those last three games. So yeah, I don't mind the plus here. Right, betting time. Quick recap of last week wasn't good. Uh, that's that's the, the, is, that, is that the quick recap? That's the recap. Blake had one winner. He had a three leg multi get up. I can tell you what it was. Paul, Paul does have a sheet now in play. We've got our uh, our ROIs and, and all of that. So, yep. Paul, okay. run, us, run yep. us through it. Okay. Let's start with Blake, the good news. Uh, last week, he had two multis. Uh, one of them failed. Uh, he had the Panthers minus eight and a half, Waz 13 and over, Eels one to 12. Uh, $20 on that. No good. Uh, but he had the other 80 on the Cowboys, Panthers, was all head to head at 269. Uh, so got to return there. And for the season so far, he is up 6230. 6230. Uh, Surly had three bets last week. They all lost. They all lost. Uh, he is down 8750 for the year. And, and we'll point out he had a non betting week. I think he should be down 18750. Yeah, definitely. Well, he, d he didn't spend the hundy. He didn't, he didn't not spend it either. Oh well, I, I, this is a democracy, so I'll go with the What's, majority. It's, it's a it's a it's a three one result on that one. Yeah. Right, Sterling is down one hundred and eighty seven fifty. Head out, Sterling. 
Uh, Carl, uh, you had three bets last week, and they all lost. They did. Yep. Uh, you were down twenty three fifty. It's basically up. I'm doing good. Twenty three fifty for the season. Teddy, um, who had a good week in round two, uh, failed to get a win in uh, round three because basically the dragons. Um, Everyone through everyone every every ride went through the dragons, Paul. Yes, indeed. Uh and then you took some uh over unders uh on a number of games. And they all went overs big yes. time. <laughs> and that and the week before you took the did the same thing. You went unders in three games and the Canberra Tigers game, the total was forty three when you said it, and I looked and I said, No, nah, it's changed to forty four and a half. Um and 44 points were scored in that game. So you clicked it on that one the week before, but wow. no, no success last week. Uh, and I lost both my bets uh, last week. Um, How's Teddy for the season? Teddy is $16.90 up for the season. That's up there. Huge. Uh, three, three, six bucks a week. It's flying. I went uh, no good last week. <laughs> it's better than following the few I had, Carl. <laughs> I'm down $39 for the season. So... Um, not a lot to uh, write home about. So if we take Seely out of the equation, overall we're doing okay. <laughs> As a team, Seely got a lift. And I'm going to start with Seely this week. He's, oh, he's got some bits. He's already chasing his tail. All right. He's got two $50 multis here. Uh, both four legs. Lars 13 plus into the Dolphins minus two and a half. Cows minus one and a half. Roosters minus two and a half. $50 at $19.17. Uh, in the second multi, he's got Cowboys head to head, Waz minus six and a half, Tigers plus twelve and a half, and Raiders head to head at eleven dollars eighty four. Two huge plays for Surly there. Uh, Teddy, what are you using your hundred dollars for this week? Uh, I'm having a uh, double, a thirty dollar double Roosters into the Dolphins, which I think will be about two dollars eighty seven around that month. Hang on, I'll confirm that. Roosters into the Dolphins, did you say? No. $2.88. Uh, I'll be having uh, $30 on the Bulldogs plus six and a half. Yep. And I'll be having $40 on the Dragons plus eight and a half. Just light it on fire now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blake? Uh, I don't know if you want to clap me in, going for the hat trick. Two wins in a row. I don't know. Carrying the team nut. No clap. Okay. Um, I just got two multis. I've gone the same route. I've gone a head to head multi uh, the Rabbits, the Cowboys, Manly, and the Warriors. $80 on at $4.94. And one that's not up yet, but I expect these. I've got $20 on Nanai to score, Jeremiah Nanai to score, uh, the Hammer to score. And a double turbo into Manly 13 plus. Turbo to score Manly 13 plus. 20 bucks on that. It's going to be half of the plus eight and a half and the 13 plus to get up, isn't it? <laughs> I have got three plays this week. I'm going $40 on a Warriors, Dolphins, and Raiders head to head multi. It's $6.08. Uh, Ten dollars on sixty-one or more points scored in the Warriors game at nine dollars fifty, and I'm going overs in the Roosters Panthers game and overs in the Cowboys Broncos game. Fifty dollars on that at three dollars thirty-eight. Nice. Oh, yep. I've got eighty dollars on a double, both head to head, Cowboys Dolphins. And then I've got a $20 double, uh, Tommy Turbo to score a try, into the Hammer to score a try. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you just get that after listening to me? Oh, turn it up. He wasn't, it. He wasn't listening. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> he was too busy trying to do the next week's going to roll green. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got a red square. <laughs> um. We want to give an update on the tipping comp before we wrap things up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're off. Crikey, Blake must be leading it, is he? Well, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because, wow, we, here we go. Drum roll. Um, Blake 
was the best last week in the tipping cop because he's got the yellow cap next to his name. Hey. There he is, right there in 21st position. Yellow cap, best performed player last week. As he said, he picked the round, only had one multi get up. So that's a bit of a concern. How, how many man of the matches have you had before, Blake? Uh, one none. It. No Channel 9 man of the matches anyway. No checks. Well, so there you go. I, don't know if, I don't know if there's anything coming my way from you fellas well, over there. Uh, to, be, to be fair, when Benji used to flick the ball around his back to you, the, the camera didn't even have you in shot. They just stayed on Benji. <laughs> uh, yep. No, quite fair, Paul. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations to uh, Marge, who is top of the table in our tipping comp on 24.5 points. Um, but well done to Blake, who was that best player for the week with the big yellow cap. He's down in 21st position on 20 and a half points. Remember, there's some bonus bets to give away at the end of the season. So uh, keep putting your picks in. There's not a lot of points between um, first, uh, first place and Blake, who's on uh, in 21st position. Only four points separating uh, top from Blake at the moment. The margins are massive in this. Whenever yes. you, they're, they're huge. I've only got yep. one or two this year. Yep. So, Do you notice, yes. Teddy, we didn't get a shout-out there? Tough. Oh, yeah, right. I've noticed we've fallen to 113th and 115th, Carl. So. <laughs> stick, stick strong, mate. Stick strong. Yeah. Stick that. Long way to go. We're, we're three weeks into a 27-round season. Yeah. I don't know where Surly is, and I'm 191st, so um, there we go. <laughs> It's got to be fastest and faster than the slowest person, Teddy. We're fine right now. Keep, keep, in, keep in mind, we were keep in mind we were screwed. Oh, up. Oh, there, you. Yeah. there we go. Tough. All right, punters, we'll leave it there. Um, don't forget to send in your bad beats of the round too. Blake, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, lads. Go the Tigers. Go the Warriors. Anyone else? Sharks, Roosters, Eels. Nah, just those two. Roosters, maybe Para as well. Uh, for the moment. Teddy, thank you for your time again this week. I'd say it was a pleasure, but after that intro, it decidedly was not. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Teddy's not the kind of person to hold a grudge, so we'll be fine by me. <laughs> uh, Paul, thank you again. Appreciate your uh, your effort with the grid this week. Oh, I'm looking forward to uh, this weekend. I, I'm pumped after that uh, effort by the Waz last week. And I think uh, we're onwards and upwards from here. Looking forward to a good four or five weeks ahead. Great time. Uh, to you listeners, punters, thank you very much. We'll be back next week to do it all again on the Advantage Line. <laughs>